the moment. Um, our next presenter is um, Juliana, uh, and um, I'm going to, so she's presenting, she's joining us uh, online from um, Spain. There she is. Hello, Marina. Nice to see you. ¿Qué tal? Muy bien. Uh, so we need to have the. Can you can you speak again, Juliana, a little bit? Yes. Say something. Do you hear me? Too, too well. Mm. We are going. To... <laughs> so I think we have the sound a little bit more under control now. Um, so, um, Juliana, I'm going to uh, to briefly introduce you. You are going to um, uh, talk your paper paper title, the title of your work, Las Atrevidas, the risk takers. Um, so, Dr. Juliana España Keller is an electronic sound and performance artist, curator, researcher, and educator based in Spain. Through her multi trans interdisciplinary approach, she has all bodies as forms of noise and disruption in the way in which language and communication is made noisy. Her public kitchen work, uh, works have been in specific spaces globally and continue to um, contribute to histories of sound performance art with an objective lens on particip participatory practices in feminist materialist and post-human theory, using the space of the domestic kitchen as the focus. Juliana also directs an international creative artist residency named Bajo el Olivo in A Laurino Grande, which seeks to sustain and develop a collaborative environment with a more than human approach to multi species ethnographic research. So, um, lovely having you here, uh, Juliana. So, over to you now. Thank you very much, Marina. Um, uh, can I share my screen now? Is that okay? Yes, please. See if it works. Um, yep, that's great. Yes, thank you. And just make sure my slideshow is working in presenter view. Uh, unfo no, uh, unfortunately, that's not the right way to do it, is it? Um, uh, you could try just, um, if you go back to sharing your screen and go on to uh, share just the presentation window rather than, I think you shared the desktop. Okay. Uh, usually if I say present a view, does that, and then I have to, you can still yes. see my notes, can you? No, we can't. We no. can't see the notes. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. All right. So let me begin. Um, and thank you very much, uh, Marina and uh, Veronica, for this wonderful invitation. It's been such an amazing week, and I've enjoyed all of the presentations immensely. And also um, Sophie's um, precursor to this uh, talk that I'm about to give. Um, so I would have to say that um, this image of me here, actually, uh, sometime in 2015 is a good place to start in this presentation. I'm, I'm in my studio here in, in Montreal, uh, Quebec, Canada, experimenting with how to make sound from objects with a contact mic. And the act of doing this um, became actually a very transnational and transcultural connection or conduit, although I did not know this at the time. Um, here I am in, in Canada, it's 2015 and getting ready to close up shop because I was moving to live and study in Melbourne, Australia on a scholarship to do a PhD in sound and performance arts. And in the four years um, that uh, I actually um, uh, was, that I wrote and choreographed my thesis dissertation, I received the opportunity to travel to Spain on a grant 
uh, upon acceptance uh, in, in Blanca, Murcia, which is a province in Spain, to create uh, a new body of work. And uh, after having written my thesis proposal and being accepted to work on this project, I was already theorizing on what it takes uh, to make a connection with sound matter. And I was thinking about how to provide a space for interrogating how our relation to bodies might transgress in how we listen to sound and to investigate the ways in which we might have always already been entangled with sonic matter leading me to consider how sonic matter, voice and bodies can make an impact outside of academia. And to also add to this personal narrative, uh, I lived in uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada for 25 years. I'm originally British, um, I'm also uh, half Spanish, so quite a multicultural background. But uh, in Montreal, uh, where I completed my BFA and MFA, uh, I am still presently teaching uh, remotely there uh, and from Spain. So my, my Canadian education has also been a focal point of my evolution and an important contribution to my professional practice uh, by taking a fluxus approach to performative and participatory practices. For many years, I was also a member of the uh, performance art collective WACA in Montreal, which was called Women with Kitchen Appliances. And they were a collective of feminist punk artists who found a way to make sound with kitchen appliances and contributed to how a public kitchen became the backbone of my recent research and practice and scholarship. Also, I was looking at the ever evoking understanding of post-human bodies, that is the various post-human approaches to the body and its implications for issues of ecology, of race, gender, ethics, and social politics in the 21st century. And the residency gave me the opportunity to ultimately challenge, examine, elaborate the strengths and weaknesses intrinsic to this notion and to use bodies as a site of critique with an ongoing mode of inquiry to be applied to everyday life. And in this sense, the post-human body is for me both a theory and a practice that strives towards and is motivated by gender fluidity and difference, by racial equities, by the environment and in economic sustainability and so much more. So this talk um, is about many things, quite complex, but which led to the making of Las Atrevidas, um, which I believe is on display in the gallery. Um, but I would like to mention that I also led a sound and performance uh, collective in Melbourne, Australia, entitled Sonic Electric from 2015 uh, to 2019. And you will also be seeing quite a few images from this sound performance collective during this uh, presentation because they were integral to building a practice-led thesis and my ongoing research. So this little mantra I composed invites us into what kinds of components and forces, practices, ideas, beliefs, materialities, discourses, are constantly formed and reformed as ongoing post-human practices and how ideas are material, temporal and social cultural forces that are always in flux for me as vibrating matter. My research is translated into a methodological guideline that encourages you all to have an increasing attention to all the differences and unpredictability that may be noticed in a musical event where actors and relations are re-examined. So here is the starting point for me on my residency in Spain, where I was introduced to a group of Spanish ladies from a small pueblo in the province of Murcia who have lived in Blanca all their lives. They are mothers, they are caretakers, their wives, grandmothers, they are women who grew up with each other, who went to school together and have raised children and now tend to tend to their grandchildren and meet on a regular basis in the local multicultural center to exchange cooking recipes, put on small theater pieces, 
they sing and dance together, they perform together at the local multicultural center. And so we held a workshop for several days talking about their everyday lives and their overlaps, intersections, contradictions, and societal connections of most Spanish women in a domestic space. And we discussed how important food security was to their well being and to their families. We then discussed the tools of the kitchen. I had asked them to bring in their favorite tools so that I could see what they use in their kitchen in the everyday. We had interesting conversations about Spanish food culture, traditions, and how the tools of the kitchen have changed over the years to using more electrical kitchen appliances instead of food preparation being rooted in manual labor, indicating our relationship between the human and machine, action and inertia, subject and object, culture and nature, and how their children now feel about community what it means to be staying at home, cooking as a necessity, and how this transgresses the notion of private versus public in relation to our bodies. Adjunct to this conversation, we started to introduce the sounds from manual kitchen tours and talk about their vitality and ease of use and the familiar sounds that they make that are entangled with food matter. Just play you just a short little clip from each of these vignettes. Está buenísima la picantosa. En otros pueblos le llaman pito. Hay gente que le llama de una manera. Pero es picantosa. Es picantosa porque lleva un poco. Sí, porque depende de la región. Porque la primera picantosa yo no. De picante. Que por eso se llama picantosa. Y cada señora y la coletica. La coleta. And again, another little clip. Oh, and here they are such a lively bunch of ladies with so much energy and um, this is actually a portrait that I took of them after this workshop um, from the left in Carnita, 62 years old, Leonor Lopez Barrillas, 71 years old, Carmen Martinez Toledo, 65 years old, Matilde Cano Binaño, 74 years old, Rosario Jover Cano, 72, and Piedad Cano Minaño, 70 years old. And here they are again, holding their favorite um, kitchen appliance in their home. And actually here, um, I have a portrait in my kitchen of Encarnita, who is actually the butcher's wife in the Pueblo of Blanca. So this is a participant member of Sonic Electric in Melbourne, uh, performing and listening to a can of poutine, which is a French Canadian dish and which, canes, which actually contains a can of chips with gravy. And she is electronically, physically in a mind body relationship connected to this can of food, to the sound, weight and material vibrations of vibrant matter, measuring, reimagining difference through the feel, flow, vitality of what I call a sonic interaction. And I will explain in a few minutes how that works electronically. But what emerges from this conceptual relation is the corporeality of women's bodies, which includes a diverse range of uh, fam female identifying and also non-binary persons. 
and still even working with younger sound artists to create an audiovisual artwork as a public kitchen makes the materiality of women's work visible uh, as the implicit body of a woman at work. In an interview with American feminist scholar Karen Barrard, she was asked, since your work is not about women or gender, what does it have to do with feminism? And she, of course, answered, uh, stated, it was everything. And I quote Karen Barrard here, Eros, desire, life forces run through everything, not only specific body parts or specific kinds of engagements among body parts, Matter itself is not a substrate or a medium for the flow of desire only. Material, materiality itself is always already a desiring dynamism and it is always reconfiguring, energized and energizing, enlivened and enlivening. I have been particularly interested in how matter comes to matter, whether or not there are any women or people or any other macroscopic beings in sight along with other new materialist feminists in this regard, feeling, desiring and experiencing are not singular char characteristics or cap capacities of human consciousness. Matter feels, it converses, it suffers, it desires, yearns, and it also remembers. And that is from um, New Materialism, Interviews and Cartographies written by Rick Dolphin and Iris van der Turn. So on this collective journey, sonic material phenomena is created with kitchen tools and electric appliances co-composed by volunteer participants that are gathered around an immersive kitchen table installation that I call the motherboard, which you can see in that slide. The motherboard, um, from the perspective of a performing participant, is an ambulatory surface platform re resembling a lengthy kitchen table that is used for the placement of kitchen tools, electric kitchen appliances, electronic music hardware, and plays a critical part of the installation. Each participant plays from their own station or placemat. Oops, Some sorry. patterns are formed with the help of a small electronic audio device. The contact mic that you see in the center of the slide is marked with a Canadian maple leaf beer cap. A contact microphone, also known as a pickup or a PSO, is a form of microphone that senses audio vibrations through contact with solid objects. Contact mics are entangled within the apparatus through the motherboard. So lead cables connected to comp contact mics feed guitar amplifiers that are placed under the motherboard that amplify noisy material into a public space, leading the listener on a sonic journey. It is a tactical uh, partnership with musical hardware and the somatic body that in concert produces sonic performance phenomena. Measuring difference through the feel, flow, or vitality of this enactment. And so in the sonic performance installation here in um, you see, which is the International Symposium of Electronic Art in Hong Kong, China in 2017, all the kitchen tools and appliances originate from these participants own home and private space. And each public kitchen leads to innumerable potential iterations as a technique for making ethnomusicological research creation across geographical locations possible via an immersive sculptural apparatus and of course requires active human participation. This imminent process that produces interactions are fluxes of vibrations of matter harmonizing. Sound matter is therefore generated by making these conditions, forces, a constant process of engagement, where thinking and acting move from the middle out, drawing on what is intrinsic or embedded, creating ways of shifting into each other and attuning to these fields of difference. 
A public kitchen can therefore be seen to represent an active pedagogy for organizing and responding collectively to the local through a spectrum of sound phenomena where home is middling. I would also like to propose what feminist scholar Rosie Bray Dotti distinguishes as a break with the doxa or a break with established norms and values by deterioralizing them and introducing alternative ethical flows. In each public kitchen, the emphasis is put on the live moment of unraveling what I call a sonic recipe. And a sonic recipe is a relational partition um, of electronic sound patterns that form a dynamic unfolding arrangement of sound, noise, material, composed with kitchen tools in a sonic performance installation. I'm also going to touch briefly on the notion of deep listening as a capability that makes ourselves available and receptive to a, the tuning of the world we live in. I discovered resonance as proposing a new way of thinking causality in my practice and, and also agency is about the indeterminate possibilities for worldly reconfigurings, a retuning of the world as Canadian composer and environmentalist Murray Schaefer emphasizes. As you can see from this slide on a public beach in Iceland, I hold deep listening workshops a tuning into the natural environment as a tuning into oneself to find oneself. The, this, oh, sorry. this slide illustrates a pots and pans procession along the waterfront in Hobart, Tasmania. This public kitchen was hosted by the University of Tasmania and Mona, the Museum of Old and New Art. I seek volunteer participants for a public kitchen who have an open mind to performing, those who possess a curiosity around sound noise creation, the effective ability to open up subjectively through sonic phenomena to a public. So whether it be technological or non-technological in the social performative relation, it can also collectively uncover an automated society that is coping with the demands of life within our technological society. Between practice and theory, this um, form of social engagement focuses on matter and meaning, and thus the tools of the kitchen become a gentle matter in a very post-human world. And so to me, installation art is a hybrid space, like this slide of a public space um, in Melbourne called Testing Grounds. It forms an unlimited workspace. It is interchangeable. It is participatory. It creates and articulates and sounds out. And so to end this presentation, I'm going to show you a clip. <laughs> that was um, actually one of the last um, performance works that uh, I presented in Melbourne before I left um, uh, to live in Spain. 
So a noisy feminist politic refers to um, affirmative action that is actually working in parallel to feminist empowerment. And a public kitchen actually does it dare to take risks, um, as Bredotti states. And I am reflecting on the uncertainty of our current times to expose social rifts, to find human non-human connections in co-composing sonic recipes. I expose the material realities of a woman's everyday because historically the kitchen separated people as a place of oppression and women perform most of the world's labor and materialities are actually never neutral. Thus, uh, a public kitchen could be conceived as an alternative ecology, critical of a neo-capitalist system and includes decolonizing work, which means centering the voices knowledge and experiences of black, brown and indigenous people, BPIP, to challenge the historical dominance of Western European and white American music, narratives and practices that have, had, that have resulted in minimization and erasure through our field. And there is no end point of being decolonized. There is only constant learning, reflecting and growing. My practice opens up a wide range of nomadic possibilities and philosophical thought, which I hope has contributed to the thematic today. And I would like to thank you uh, for listening. And um, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you so much. A wonderful presentation. What a, a great way of connecting all this. Uh, you brought us back to the kitchen, and I never knew that peppercorn could be so <laughs> so um, uh, one that produced such wonderful uh, sound.